stand by my true God, cause I am the ruler of my state of Judah. Like Buddha, Buddha, da, Buddha, da, 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 da. Hey, what's up everybody? This video came by recommendation. It is and will be my very first response video. Can you believe it? In all these years, I never did a response video. But this one is a first because it's very interesting. It falls in alignment with much of what I've been talking about over the years. And what I'm going to do is share with you how I look at videos where people share their near-death experiences what I think when I hear people talking about going beyond the veil and visiting other realms because again as someone who is a seer and one who has experienced and pierced beyond the veil in multiple ways I never look at anything in one way and I am not religious but there is going to be a lot of religious context within this share so I'm letting you guys know who are not religious but I can still share the video and show you how it all still comes down to one important universal bottom line alright so this video is titled pastor goes to hell and shares his experience of the afterlife and the person who is doing a reaction to this pastor's testimony goes by the name of Noah I'm actually going to be doing a reaction to both of their commentaries so this is a uh, reaction to a reaction of a reaction <laughs> anyway let's get started all right let's go what's good deluxe family welcome back to the channel so in this video right here we have a guy that actually experienced hell we're going to listen to his testimony, but the most interesting thing that I find out when you hear different stories about heaven and hell was, for example, like I had a really, really close friend. She experienced a lot of the supernatural. Okay, now one night she actually had a dream of a depiction of hell. And the way it was depicted, she was in a movie theater watching on a big screen. And one of the images that really stood out, she, she gave me a list of all these different images, everything that was going on. And one of them, she was like, um, there were like ladies and guys that were having spears stuck up their, their private part, like just constantly stuck up like that. It sounds insane and crazy, but that's what she saw in the dream. And then at the same time, it was almost being comedic. It was Marvel. I think it was like Captain America making people laugh. So it was showing them hell, but also making people laugh at the same time. It's now. There are beings who get enjoyment and pleasure out of pain and torture. And I'm not just talking about on a spiritual plane. I'm talking about physically. There are beings who enjoy being tortured. Now, the dream that was shared very well could have been symbolic, but it very well could be a real vision. But I surmise that this would not be a spiritual vision and it would not be an astral vision because even our astral body don't have uh, uh, genitalia, you know? So when we hear people sharing dreams like this, just know that the source of that vision very well could be a subconscious message. It could be a subliminal message. It could be a actual visual of something happened physically or it could be something that is being acted out or projected in the mind of the persons by entities who literally know how to project very real physical like images onto our consciousness more on that as we watch this video crazy so i ended up looking up like how the picture and that exact depiction that she gave from her dream was actually depicted in one of the Google images. It's like, yo, that's crazy because she didn't look at that Google image before she saw it in her dream. But it was literally spears being stuck up that part of the body constantly. So it's like... So again, this is a form of pleasure torture that unfortunately has been a part of the human consciousness for a very long time. And... This sister very well could have subconsciously tapped into 
the collective consciousness and pulled from that a visual that is symbolically relevant to her life as well. So let's keep going. Hey, yo, if that's a line like that, and then other people are actually like having similar testimonies that align like that, it's, it's just interesting. At the end of the day, we all have the right to believe whatever we want to. That's all right. You feel what I'm saying? So I heard this guy's health testimony, and he claimed that he saw Jesus. I saw a snippet of this testimony on TikTok. I just passed by a really, really quick, it's probably like a 30 second, one minute clip. But when I heard this man say he saw Jesus, I had to hit him up. So what I did, I texted him on Instagram. This was January 30th. I said, I see you say you saw Jesus. What did he look like? I got to know what Jesus looked like. If you saw Jesus, tell me what he looked like. But this is this was his response. Hello, Noah. Of course. Of course, you know, I have hundreds of thousands of requests for things like this, but I haven't been answering them because the media has distorted everything I've said. I'm not going to tell you what he looked like to me, but I will tell you that he was not blonde hair or blue eyes. What I can tell you is that if you encounter him, it will be the most love you've ever experienced. And when he looks at you, you know that he knows everything about you, but still loves you. Now. I've shared experiences over the years very similar to this, meeting beings who never told me their name, and I never assumed anything. I simply engaged in the experience, and these beings absolutely see all of who we are, and we know it. They see through us, but they still love us, accept us in a way that we'll never truly experience here on the physical plane. And this is what inspired my song, You Are Love Beyond Measure, or whenever I say, you are love beyond measure, it is these beings who are Christ beings. Now, Jesus and Christ, if you guys would like to hear my breakdown on that, uh, I have a video about Jesus and the Christ. There are two different ways of expression. Let's just put it like that. And so more than often when I hear people uh, sharing these experiences, especially people who are religious, they're going to project whatever their programming or whatever their belief is onto the experience. In other words, if the entity, if the being or the entity that they're interacting with has a, a very godly, like higher power, ethereal, super angelic energy, and you are one who believe in Jesus, more than likely, if that being does not introduce him or her or itself as that, we're going to project that and assume that is a Jesus. Same thing with someone who believes in Buddha or someone who believes in Krishna. There are people who had experiences like this of all walks of life who will project the deity or the being that they believe in and will interpret that interaction as that being. But is it really that being or is it our programming and level of consciousness that is interpreting and projecting that onto the experience? Hope this helps. And also, if I were you, I would look at this as a sign of how much God loves you because I actually responded. Blessing. So he never gave an exact depiction of Jesus. I don't know if the reason behind it is because it was more like a spiritual encounter and he couldn't really give an exact image of him or he just didn't feel like sharing. I don't know. We're going to leave that on him, but I feel like I should just include this in the video because I actually did reach out to him. I'm like, yo, Jesus, yeah, what did he look like? But without further ado, let's get straight into this. His hell encounter testimony. This is what's going on. Oh yes, uh, absolutely. Uh, I saw the real hell. I was there, and I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I don't care what a person has done to me. I would never wish that on them. Um, but for me, the way it went is that I thought that I was having a heart attack, and uh, I physically, my my spirit left my physical body, and I thought that I was going upward because I thought I had done so much good in this lifetime and helped so many people and made so many decisions that were valid decisions, but um, as opposed to me going up, I went down. And I went literally into literally into the center of the earth. And that, that's where hell is. Jesus even said that in the scriptures. He says, uh, just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a well, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the belly of the earth, uh, which is where, where hell is. Um, the things that I 
bizarre, or literally undescribable, and it just brings me, makes me emotional every time I talk about it. But uh, it was. Uh, yeah, yeah, can anyone fact check that in the comment section? Is that scripturally? Is that where hell really is? One of the things that I saw that just blew me away was there's a man on, on all fours like a dog. He was burned from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, and his eyes were bulging out. And what was worse than that is that he had a chain around his neck, so he was like a dog in hell. And what was even worse than that is that who was holding the chain? It was a demon holding the chain. And I knew because their things are not they're not said they're known. You just you just like a telepathic communication. Uh, now, when we have an experience outside of the physical body or through the lens of the dense physical body, our consciousness become a little more expanded and we become a little more sensitive to the flow of information. So what this brother is saying, and I'm never going to say he did not experience what he experienced with people who share experiences like this. What this brother is ultimately saying is that when he went to this particular place, he was telepathically picking up a knowing, and this is very true. It, this is how it happens. Now, when I look at this experience as he's describing a man burned from the top of his head all the way to the soles of his feet, I'm automatically thinking and picking up that he was not taken to a spiritual plane. He was taken on a physical plane. And let me tell you why. Because once we become disembodied, the laws and physics become very, very different. Only flesh and bones can burn in the way that this brother is describing. Now, that's not to say that there are not beings who can project the image of a physical body that appear to be burned. And it's just a vision. It's not real. It's a projection from beings who are highly telepathic and highly psychic. They can project that vision. But when I look at this and what I'm getting from this is that this brother was taken to literally the underground, under earth, which is a real physical place, what I'm about to get into, and I can't get too deep into it, but more and more is being leaked out about it with these underground tunnels and these underground uh, chambers and things that are going on underground that is really beyond human comprehension. And down there, some of these places are torture chambers, and they're these entities, these beings, that if we were to see them, we would automatically perceive them, especially people who have a religious programming, will perceive them as demons. But there are also humans who are into these things as well. And so this feels more like he actually went to a physical place and witnessed some of the things that are happening in the inner earth where these entities torture people literally to death, torture them to death, and they get amusement out of it. They are entertained by pain, suffering, and so on and so forth. Now, I can say more, but let me just go a little bit further, and I can add more to this. Um, I knew that this demon was sent in this man's life to ride him from his childhood until the time that he died, because the demon knew that if I could stay in his life long enough on the earth, if I can keep getting him to not serve God and to make bad decisions on the earth, then I'll have power over him in hell, and he will be a slave to me. Now, there's some truth to this. What a lot of people leave out is that when these kind of situations happen, these entities can't just come in and do these things. There had to have been some kind of consent or some kind of agreement for that to happen. And he's absolutely right. These entities, I'm not going to say demons because de demons have a religious context. It's a little broader than that, what we're talking about here. These beings, these entities, they like to make contracts and agreements. And in exchange, many of us are not aware of the fine print or don't really understand the fine print. So, again, this particular experience, more than likely, and I strongly feel was it's something that he literally saw in the physical, not in the spiritual, because, again, only flesh and bone can burn. Having a higher perspective and the many experiences that I've had knowing and understanding how these entities 
get us to consent in, through contracts and agreements, soul contracts and agreements, where at the end of the deal or if the deal fall through, these entities can literally, because we can, the people who sign on the dotted line in blood sometimes literally control and manipulate their soul in exchange, and they usually torture and uh, put them in a physical body and torture them and do these things and they are entertained and get pleasure and in excitement and joy from it. So it's like twice a slave. It's like you're a slave on the earth to the things of the devil and then in hell you're, you're really like a tormented dog slave. Sheesh. Uh, so, and, you know, and, and that, that's just that's a prime example of why it's very important just to heal. Because we, all of us, we do have traumas that we probably haven't healed from. It could be a trauma from last year. It could be even a trauma from 10 years ago. Trauma does weigh down on our multidimensional spiritual, light, metaphysical bodies. So this is very really true. Really attacking that trauma with no fear, overcoming it so you can move more in peace and love is very important. And another part. That experience it just blew me away. I just, I'm, it still gobbles me to this day. If there was a session in hell where music was playing, and it was the same music that we hear on the earth, but as opposed to uh, entertainers singing it, uh, the music demons were singing it, and it was some of the same lyrics that we hear here. Um, and then again, things like I said, they, they're not things are not telepathically. They're te things are telepathically known there. I knew that. On Earth, a lot of the lyrics and the music and the songs are inspired by demons. Wow! So sometimes when people smoke to get high and, and to, to get lyrics and to get verses and rappers and all those things. So in a lot of the music, people actually wow. smoke to get high, to get verses and to get bars and be hot and to be fresh and uh, to get that that swag. But when they open themselves up uh, to a false high it's like illegal access into the spirit realm yeah. Yeah. now this is all very true this has been one of my talking points over the years that music is very very powerful and very very persuasive and influential and so what he's saying in terms of these beings who send these people these people who are on earth in a physical body influencing them to write these mu these lyrics and this music casting spells so to speak this is all very very true but it also works in a reverse we can create beautiful things here and project it outward where other beings can receive the energy because as being as multi-dimensional beings we are transmitters and receivers of information but getting back to the point of this music they use the those who are in to um vulgarity they're smoking at stuff drinking you know getting high and all that these beings have direct access to the frequency because those things weigh us down and vibration, and that's direct access. There's a very popular MC, I'm not going to say her name, who admitted that she writes her best content, all her hits, and there was a, another iconic musician who admitted that all of his hits came from being high on smoking weed or drinking or getting high in some kind of way. So what he is saying is true, and this again goes back to what I was talking about. These entities cannot come in on our lives without us consenting to it in some kind of way or making a deal or making a contract. And many times people who are made mega stars, I would say 99.9% of the time, there's always that one exception, but 99.9% .9 of the time there had to have been some kind of contract or deal made for the musician to get to a place where they can reach and influence millions of people because this is what it's all about influencing the people in exchange they will make you rich and famous but look at the price you will eventually pay be it physically mentally or spiritually because hell can manifest in multiple ways this brother what he's sharing 
absolutely implies that he was literally taken to a physical plane underneath the earth where all it's a lot of stuff going on in the physical earth, not on the spiritual plane. And he witnessed this. And I'm going to tell you another reason why I, I picked this up is that he didn't say anything about the, he seen the demon, so to speak, and the man burnt from head to toe and all this stuff going on, but they didn't see him. That again suggests that he was there vibrating on a different frequency in a different form. Just like there are beings all around us right now, we can't see with the naked eye because they're vibrating in a spirit in a <clears throat> in a different form on a different frequency. We can't see them. Well, when he went to where he was, he was on a space, a place within physical earth, and those beings were unable to see him. You see how it goes? Because spirit is appears to be physical and solid to spirit. Physical appears to be physical and solid to spirit. The astral appears to be physical and solid to astral and so on and so forth, but neither would appear to be physical and solid to their opposites. You see? So let's get back to this. They actually come in contact with demons who give them lyrics for the purpose of controlling people on the earth. So uh, there, see here, music is for like get over a breakup. Don't worry, be happy. I bust the windows of your car or uh, I, under my umbrella or whatever. Uh, there, every lyric to every song is to torment you as to the fact that you didn't worship God through music when you were on the earth. So it's like, you know, you had a chance to worship him in church and worship him at home and worship him through music, but you chose to uh, worship Satan by repeating the lyrics that he inspired to come into the earth. Now, so, I want, now, so, I want. But before Noah speaks... Uh, this is a form of casting spells, what he's talking about. Outside of the religious context, this is what it's all about. It's about getting us to take in and to consent to a way of thinking and behavior that would ultimately weigh us down in frequency and vibration. And by doing so, we consent to the outcome. I, I, want, you guys, I want you guys to keep in mind you know, this is, he's his own human being, his own spirit, his own soul with his own experiences. You guys literally do not have to take everything he's saying as fact. You guys can just, we can just listen to it with an open mind and an open ear. But this kind of aligns with what I was saying in one of my previous videos on how everything that happens here physically comes from the spiritual dimension first. Like I was explaining, like everything that was created around us, it was thought within the mind first on a spiritual realm and then what do we do we created it with our physical hands from this from this bed but especially when it comes to music because this is this is this is when vibrations come into play and words like words are very 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 powerful and this is what I was telling you guys before so it kind of aligns with what I was saying he summed it up so well it's no coincidence his name is Noah he has Noah Jacob TV there's no coincidence there very very wise for that because music is very controlling and um uh, i was so i was angered with, with god because it's like how, how did i do this much good and and i'm actually um i'm actually angry hell. with god well um uh, i lifted up out of the hill and i came back on the earth and god began to speak to me i actually saw the real jesus i saw him and he began to speak to me and he said that he said you have been secretly upset with the people that hurt you. Um, you have been hoping that I would punish the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people, these are my people. He says, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I'm giving you because I want to do something through you that the world hasn't seen. Uh, and so the root of it is that although I did good, I gave a lot to people, I, I, I did a whole lot of good things, the thing that I had in my heart was unforgiveness towards people who had did me wrong. Because a person that can't forgive is a person that's forgotten how much they have been forgiven of. So uh, that's my experience with hell. Hell is a real place. And I don't believe that God doesn't send people to hell. People send themselves to hell. Now, he said a mouthful. Again, I'm speaking outside of religious context. I'm just speaking in terms of energy, frequency, vibration, and consciousness. What he's saying is absolutely true and very real. Walking around full of resentment, hatred, anger, unforgiveness, and we are all challenged to overcome them all. And we feel very justified in how we feel. And there's nothing wrong with feeling that way. But 
cannot get stuck there. We literally live in a system that engineers sets the stage for us to feed this kind of energy more than love, more than harmony, more than understanding. And it's that way for a reason. It's to challenge us. So you see, if there's always uh, uh, fear there, fear is very dense energy. And we emit very dense energy in a state of fear. Hatred, resentment. Violence, being violent, thinking, being vulgar and disrespectful and things like that and staying in that space, it's just weighing us down, 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 down. And when we don't really understand the power that we have on top of knowing who we really are, we blindly consent to falling, falling in these lower realms of consciousness Falling for the trick to sign these soul contracts with these entities can have their way with us, be it physically or spiritually and so on and so forth. So hell ultimately comes down to being so disconnected from who and what we really are that we are in a continuous state of torment and torture, be it mentally, physically spiritually, astrally, psychologically, and so on and so forth. And it is all being done by our own will, usually in ignorance or blind consent. And whatever's still left inside of you that God has been trying to get out of you that you, you die with, that's going to determine where you go. You guys want to, want to know, did you learn to love well? Did you learn to forgive well? Did you, did you, well, again, when we become disembodied, these physical bodies are really, really again like prisons. These physical body traps and holds our light metaphysical astral bodies in this particular space, right? However, once we become disembodied, those aspects of ourselves, the disembodied aspects of ourselves, providing there's no manipulation and no tricky, trickery by forces who understand how this thing works, we will automatically go to the plane of vibration that matches our frequency. So we are very low in frequency and um, very hostile and, you know, hadn't worked through our traumas or whatever. More than likely, we're going to meet the lower astral planes where there are those entities down there who are parasitic in nature who will be feeding off of that dense energy. And just as we have people on the planet, on this physical plane, who are making deals with us and feeding off of our energy and using us to pull in more souls in the process to feed off of and manipulate and ultimately bring down into the lower non-physical realms as well. This is a very layered very, very cleverly thought out system. But when we work on ourselves through due diligence and not fall for the trickery and stay connected to the God within and our higher selves and use the information given to us by Christ beings and those who have gone before who have ascended we can easily reverse this thing and not experience hell, so to speak. Sir, me well. Did you do something greater than your life? Did you do anything that has eternal significance or is everything selfish? So I thank God for the light who is Jesus because because of that light, I won't see any more days in hell. Well, yeah, so I feel like, well, I know that our actions and how we are, it, det it determines how our mind state is really going to be here. And just knowing that, it's kind of like, some people are here on earth, but living in hell mentally. Like, so enslaved and like overthinking and anxiety and all those things. So, hell doesn't only have to be like some crazy other place that we've never experienced now. It may get worse. Hell ultimately boils down to state of mind, state of consciousness. You're right, Nora. With peace. And just having that space mentally and spiritually so you could just be walking in that direction. So it seems as if this man right here was moving with unforgiveness. Now, that's something that a lot of people may do. I'm not bashing him for it. He said it himself. 
But that right there was one thing that was enslaving him. That right there was one thing that was keeping hate within his heart. So he was never able to really release that. So, um, pretty interesting experience. Like I said, we all have the right to believe whatever we want to believe. You could take it as truth. You could take it as lie. Or you could just take it with an open mind and accept it for what he experienced himself. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Make sure you do like the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on post notifications. That's very, very, very important. So you can catch when I post another video just for you guys. I'm going to catch you in the next one. The same way you're going to catch me in the next one. Peace. Thank you very much, Noah, and thanks to the pastor for sharing his experience. He pretty much summed it up. I have nothing else to say. I thank you all for this moment. As always, you are love beyond measure. Continue to question, learn, and grow. Keep it growing and flowing, and happy travels.